Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Amatex Solid State Controls Preventative Maintenance Recommendations and Guidelines presentation. As always, the first thing I'd like to ask everybody to do is if you see the chat bar on the right hand side, if you can hear my voice and you can see the screen, please let us know in the chat bar that you can hear us and see the presentation uh, so we know everything's working. That would be cool. Uh, my name is Craig Williams. I'm the Senior Technical Manager for Amatech Solid State Controls. I'm based in the Stafford office here in Houston, Texas. I have 20 years in the industrial UPS industry. I've worked with all major UPS and charger manufacturers. Um, I'll be taking a back seat in uh, the presentation today. Um, Chris Muth uh, will be uh, pre presenting today. I'll introduce you to him in just a moment. But a few admin things to get out of the way. First of all, um, there will be around about a 30 second lag between you hearing my voice and us seeing a question. So if you type a question in the chat bar, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds, uh, maybe 30 seconds for us to see that question. And uh, talking about those questions, we tend not to try and answer those questions during the webinar itself. We'll keep the questions until the end and we will answer those questions uh, at the end. If there's something pertinent that we see, we may answer it while we're going through, but uh, usually we keep it until the end. Uh, the platform that we are using is called Webinar Jam, and Webinar Jam has a panic button that the admins here can use. And basically what that means is if we have a connection issue, um, then what we can do is we can press the panic button and that creates a brand new room, invites everybody into that webinar room and we can continue uh, on from where we left off. We've never had to use it. It's a very stable platform, so uh, hopefully that is the case today. Uh, the webinar will be recorded, um, so if you have registered and you are watching this, uh, you will automatically be sent a link afterwards to the recorded webinar. Um, what I will say about the recorded webinar link that you're sent automatically from Webinar Jam, that is treated like a live webinar. If you want to go back and watch the replay, um, you have to watch it from start to finish. Unfortunately, there is no rewind or fast forward or pause button. Um, but what our fantastic marketing department do is they download that recording and then upload it to our Amatech SCI YouTube channel. And when we do that, you'll also get the link for that. And that way you can rewind, fast forward, and press pause and do all that kind of good stuff. The webinar should last around about one hour, depending on how many questions we've got and the content uh, today. So that's around about the timeline uh, that we have. So without any uh, further admin things to go over, then I will turn this over to Chris, who will introduce himself and uh, take over things from there. Chris, over to you. All right, thank you, Craig. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Christopher Muth. I've been with Amitech Solid State Controls for a little over 14 years now and have had the privilege to work in lots of varying positions inside the company. I started off as a factory field engineer where I'd actually travel to sites like the ones you're working in to perform the preventive maintenance that we're going to be discussing today. So I can definitely speak firsthand to the uh, value and importance of doing preventive maintenance. Um, as Craig mentioned, today's uh, presentation should be a little bit less than an hour. We'll have uh, opportunities at the end for questions. Uh, and I'm looking forward to kind of getting started and going over what uh, our guidelines and recommendations are for preventive maintenance. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So today's purpose is we're going to provide a clear factory guideline on how to proactively maintain your Amatech SCI equipment. Um, I'll do this by explaining when you should be performing those services, uh, importantly, why you should have those services done, and uh, what the scope of each level of preventive maintenance entails. And then when you leave today, hopefully you will have a better understanding why factory preventive maintenance service ensures the reliability and the functionality of your Amatech SCI equipment and the importance of proactive service to protect your critical processes. A little bit about ourselves before we kind of get into that and how we support you in doing this uh, preventive maintenance. We are headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. That is where we manufacture all of the inverters, UPSs, and chargers and distribute them worldwide. 
We have approximately 255 employees. Uh, we've been in the business since 1962. And every employee that does come on board with Amatex Solid State Controls learns the purpose of our business, and that is to provide continuity of electrical power to keep businesses in business. And we do this by helping clients solve their power problems and by creating the most economical long-term results. Down there in the bottom left corner, you can see our direct contact number and website if you want to reach out to us directly. I do recommend you uh, go to our website. We've got a lot of great information and it shows all of the uh, products we can offer you and the service solutions that we have there. Uh, we do have a 1-800 hotline number that you can call as we have 24-hour emergency support for any Amatech SCI asset that you do own and is in active service. Uh, that emergency call goes to one of our technical managers based out of the Houston, Texas Service Center, and they'll support you in any type of emergency. If it is after hours, on the weekends, or holidays, it does go through a call center out of Columbus, Ohio. However, that call center just gets in touch with whomever's on call out of Texas. And then traditionally within less than an hour, they'll be contacting you for that emergency. We don't use any offshore or uh, third party service companies. If you do have an emergency, you will be speaking to one of our technical managers out of the uh, service center in Houston, Texas. We have a very strong international presence as well. Uh, as you can see from this slide here, we do have service and uh, equipment support in Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, India, and our Asia headquarters is out of Singapore. Uh, from those areas, we are able to support, support all of our international clients. It isn't uncommon, however, that we can send somebody from the uh, United States to support international clients. In fact, uh, as a field engineer, I had the opportunity to support some of our, our customers that were located in Mexico. I went to Canada. Uh, Argentina, I was in Angola, I spent some time in the Middle East, and I got to work with some of our nuclear clients over in South Korea. So we do we do use our uh, stateside field engineers where necessary, but we do have support internationally as well. We have 30 plus trained factory service engineers worldwide. Uh, 24 of those factory service engineers are dedicated to North America. We like to say that a lot of our field engineers are seasoned in their careers. And uh, what that means is, is that if you were to combine their experience, we have over 250 years uh, of experience with all of our field engineers that are currently working within Amatech solid state controls. All of our uh, field engineers are trained by Amatech solid state controls and our employees. Uh, they go through an eight to 10 month rigorous training program before they're allowed to go out into a plant such as your own and work on the equipment. We do not use any third party service companies, nor do we certify any third party service companies. Everybody that uh, works for Amatech is an employee to Amatech. That being said, all of our field engineers are qualified to work in all of our industrial markets where we sell our equipment. That means we have all of the safety requirements, safety programs, uh, liabilities and insurances, and the site required safety to work in the nuclear, oil and gas, power generation, petrochemical, wastewater, pipeline and transmission and mining markets, which is primarily where we like to sell our equipment into. A little about the services that we do offer before we get into the preventive maintenance, which is today's topic. Uh, we'll just briefly go over these. They may be future webinars, uh, but if you did not know, we offer startup and commissioning services for anything that you purchase from Amatech Solid State Controls. Today, we'll be talking about the preventive maintenance as well, but uh, we offer what we call a CSA or comprehensive service agreement. Those are long-term contracts that you can purchase into that uh, offer more benefits in the warranties and it lets you amortize the cost of your PMs over the length of the uh, service contracts, which locks you in today's prices and gives you the same budget to have year over year. That will probably be a future webinar as well, but if you're interested in a long-term contract or service contract, please let me know. I'll be happy to get you more information about those. We offer repair and evaluation and consulting. Uh, if you have a unit that has failed and may not have had preventive maintenance in the last couple of years, we can work with you technically over the phone, or we can send a field engineer out to your facility to help troubleshoot and repair that unit. If you have an older unit that you need to replace, or if you have a new expansion happening inside your plant, we're happy to work with you in order to determine the sizing of the UPS you may need or battery, work with you on the spec as part of our service industry. Something that we also have that uh, is new to our service that we're pretty excited about, this was called virtual support. 
virtual support is uh, a URL that will email you. It doesn't require any software for you to download on your end of it. But if you were to have a troubleshooting problem or a UPS that may be in fault, uh, you can have us contact you with this uh, new virtual support. And essentially, it allows us to watch and see what you're doing either through your phone or your tablet as you guys work with inside the equipment. We can pause or take snapshots of whatever you're looking at and circle things we need you to look at. It's a pretty slick new uh, virtual way to be able to troubleshoot with you right there. It is a subscription if you're interested in it. Otherwise, for our service contract members, it is included. But uh, if you want more information about it, I think uh, our marketing team, Brooke, will put a link in the chat, or you can go to our website and take a look at that. And then, of course, we offer training. Uh, training is highly recommended. Uh, I've been to several of them. It's done by Don Imlay, our senior training manager. Uh, he's been with the company for over 30 years. I'm sure many of you online probably have heard the name before. We can do train at your site, but it is recommended you go to our state-of-the-art training center in Houston, Texas. It's an amazing center where you can get the uh, in-class theory and troubleshooting right there as you kind of learn from Don Imlay in a classroom environment. And then we have a live lab with equipment similar to the stuff you have inside your facility where you'll get hands-on experience of shutting the equipment down, starting it up. It really makes you very comfortable to work around your systems, understanding how you can maintain them without requiring an outage to do so. And it allows you to troubleshoot the equipment. So if you haven't had a chance, I definitely recommend trying to go to one of our training programs. All right, so let's get into it. So the big question we're always asked is why do factory preventive maintenance? And this first bullet here I'm gonna to read to you is, is really our answer as Amatex All State Controls as to why you should be doing preventive maintenance. And that is completing the factory recommended preventive maintenance ensures the peak performance of your Amatex All State Controls equipment while protecting the critical loads your facility requires to safely and consistently operate. Additionally, equipment maintained per the recommended schedule benefits from extended warranty coverage and keeps unplanned maintenance costs to a minimum. So in a nutshell, what we're trying to say there is that in order to make sure your equipment and your processes downstream is protected, you should be performing preventive maintenance on an annual basis. And if you kind of look at doing preventive maintenance, another thing you can look at and kind of ask yourself is, is what is the cost or risk of an unplanned outage on your facility's critical process? Meaning that if you haven't been maintaining these UPS systems, which if you didn't have critical processes on them to begin with, you wouldn't have a UPS there anyhow. But if you didn't do preventive maintenance on them and you were to have a storm or a fire, or maybe there's just a lightning strike or whatever, the transformer upstream fails, and that UPS hasn't been maintained over the next last few years and it doesn't operate as it's supposed to, what is it going to cost your facility in monetary if it were to drop the plant? Or more importantly, what would it be a risk to the personnel that are working within that plant if that process was to also lose control and shut down? Regular PM service also, it tends to correct or we are able to trend and correct environmental stresses. Uh, our equipment goes into environmental areas that may not be controlled. Uh, we have UPSs that sit inside of power plants where they're exposed to lots of extreme temperature changes, uh, coke dust. Uh, we maybe have our system inside of a refinery where there is exposure to low levels of H2S, which can cause corrosion. Uh, these types of environmental uh, stresses can cause the UPS to break down over time. But if you're doing regular maintenance, we can catch them before they become an actual failure. This isn't something that happens overnight. It's a slow, it's a slow environmental degradation that we can catch and correct. PM service allows us to do the functionality testing that simulates a black plant. And that's the big thing that we want to test every year. And what that is, is we make the UPS operate <clears throat> under a test where we can see if it functions as designed if you were to lose power to it and make sure that it's able to provide the amount of time you need to either get power back to the UPS so that you can get the process protected from your upstream power again or if needed you have enough time to be able to shut down your process safely so that there is no damages to your facility or risk to the personnel working within the plant. And then of course PM service allows us to replace critical components that are at their end of their electronic life cycle and could fail intermittently. A lot of the uh, parts that are inside your UPS have electronic life cycle, meaning that after a certain amount of time, they may or may not be able to operate as they were designed when first installed. Uh, this could be a system relay, it could be a control card, it could be an AC or DC capacitor. They all have an electronic life cycle that 
once they reach that, they're no longer reliable and should be changed out. They could last you another year afterwards, or they could fail a week afterwards. But this electronic life cycle that we've developed with our parts and components is based on making sure that they're changed when necessary so that your UPS functions as the day was installed. And then, of course, regular PM, like anything you want to take care of, if you take care of it, it'll remain in service throughout the designed life. Uh, we, within Amatex All State Controls, have what's called a cradle to grave policy. Any equipment that you purchase from us is an Amatex SCI asset. Uh, we'll take care of that system from the day you put it in to the day you take it out of service, meaning we'll provide you with parts, training, services on that piece of equipment. So as long as you're maintaining and take care of it, it'll last you for years and years to come. So that's the why do preventive maintenance. The second question is always, well, when do we do preventive maintenance? And you can see in the picture on the left-hand side here, Amatech always installs a little sticker. Depending on the age of the equipment, it may be inside the door, but for most of the newer systems, it's always on the outside of it. It gives you information about the model and the serial number. But as you can see there down the bottom right corner, there's a date of manufacturing. Our PM cycles are based completely around the manufacturing date of when the equipment was put uh, built and then put in place inside your plant. And that PM cycle is really then determined by an annual, a five and a 10 year PM. And as we kind of get into the, to the scope of it, you'll see what that means. But essentially, the PMs are just driven around that electronic life cycle of components that are inside the UPS. So in the first four years of its service, we recommend doing what's called an annual preventive maintenance. Uh, there's not a lot of components changed out in the annual. There's a lot of testing that's done, but the annual doesn't require a lot of parts. Uh, we change out just some critical PC relays that are part of some of the control cards, and we change out some of the incandescent lights. Um, we recommend that for the first through four years. It's fifth year in service. We recommend doing what's called a five year. Uh, that five year is just an additional part of uh, parts that get changed out, so it'll include the annuals, and then it'll have the pilot lights, the fuses, and the fans, and some of the system relays. Year six through nine, we're recommending that you do the annual PM again. We're just going back to doing the critical relays and some incandescent lights, and then of course the testing that goes along with that. And then year 10 is the major one. Year 10, we're gonna change out all of the uh, variable resistors and system capacitors, and also the printed circuit boards. A lot of people wanna know, well, why would I wanna change out printed circuit boards? Those main printed circuit boards also have capacitors on them as well. And those little capacitors can also dry up or lose their capacitance level, which can cause their intermittent failures and transfers. So we go through the annual, the five and the 10 year, and then after the 10 year is completed, that whole cycle starts over again. We start back at essentially year one, then it's annuals again until five years, and the 15th year we'll do the five year again, annuals until it turns 20, which is essentially another 10 year and so on. As you know, most of our equipment has a 25 year design life, However, it's not uncommon that some of our customers keep their equipment in service well after that. Um, so if, as long as you're maintaining them per our cycle, your systems will protect your critical processes on and on. Then the other question is as well, I can't do annual PMs every year because parts of my plant aren't gonna be in an outage until maybe year three from now, or we do five year outage seasons and stuff like that. And so how do I get into my equipment to make sure that it's operating? Well. Your Amatech equipment, oh, excuse me, just switch, switch there, uh, does not require an outage to maintain. Uh, your assets' critical loads are designed to be protected on a maintenance bypass through a seamless transfer of the static switch. Uh, the parts and function testing can all be done without having to take a plant outage. And I'll kind of explain that here on this real basic one line uh, diagram that you see in front of you. The uh, red line represents the current path this going through the UPS. And this is a normal operation. This is how your UPS looks every day as it runs 24 seven. You have the uh, current path coming from the input of the 4E voltage on the charger. The charger's taking that AC voltage turn into DC. Uh, that DC voltage is trickle charging and keeping your batteries uh, charged and waiting in the event that there is a power outage. Otherwise the current is going into the inverter the inverter is taking that DC and turning it into AC, a clean sine wave. That sine wave is being forced to synchronize and phase lock with your bypass source voltage, which is just sitting and waiting. Uh, it goes through that static switch, 
which is a uh, mechanical or a, a switch that we drive electronically through SCRs. And then it goes through a mechanical switch, which is our bypass switch, a make before break switch, and out to your downstream critical process. When we come on site to do the preventive maintenance, the first thing that we're going to do is to double check to make sure that the equipment is in sync and operating normally. Once we verify that the UPS is functioning as it's designed, we then go ahead and take the time to press the bypass the load push button. What that allows then is the current to then switch over to the bypass source. This is a seamless transfer. It happens in a quarter of a cycle through the static switch SCRs. Uh, the current then goes from your bypass source through the bypass input breaker into the static switch of the inverter, back out to that me mechanical make before break switch into your critical process. After we've done the transfer, we then roll that mechanical make before break switch, which is a maintenance bypass switch. We take that from normal operations to well, bypass, excuse me, go back to this slide right, there we go. As you can see, then the current goes through the bypass source transformer into the mechanical switch and then out to your bypass source. Once it's in this position, we can go ahead and open up the bypass input breakers. We can open up all your feeds from the upstream 480, disconnect the battery. The UPS is now completely safe to work in, change out the components, do all the testing requirements, and your critical load is protected through the maintenance bypass switch without having to take an hour to work on it. Once we're done working on the uh, UPS, we simply reverse the process. We then take that mechanical switch, put it back in the normal operation. It allows that current path to go back into the static switch. We verify that the inverter is in sync with the bypass source. Once we confirm that it is, is in sync, we go ahead and press the inverter load push button and we're back in operating where you have the battery back up and your UPS is now operating normally and we're back online. So as you can see, it does not require an outage to do it. We do understand that sometimes your process requires you to take an outage in order to work on something so critical, and that's understandable as well. <clears throat> but if you do have a UPS uh, that is not during the outage season, you can work on that piece of equipment and make sure it is reliable. So let's kind of get into this PM scope and guidelines. So this is kind of the uh, bread and butter of what we do every time we come out and work on one of your Amatech SCI assets. It is important to remember that these recommendations and guidelines that follow, they apply to all of your critical backup equipment that we, Amatech Solid State Control sells. Uh, it does include your UPS systems, it includes your inverters, your battery chargers, your isolation transformers, um, your voltage regulators. Uh, so this whole, this whole kind of guideline that we're gonna cover right now, it covers all of your Amatech SCI assets. Uh, in order to assure your proper equipment functionality, the PMs, calibrations, voltage currents, and frequency, uh, frequency adjustments, uh, we do recommend that they should be performed by an Amatex Solid State Controls uh, factory field engineer. Like again, like we talked about before, we don't subcontract, promote, or authorize any third party companies to service our equipment. And uh, the PM schedules that we're gonna be talking about should be followed from the first anniversary date uh, from when the equipment was first installed. So, talking about your annual preventive maintenance, the first thing we're gonna do when we come out to your site to do the PM is we're gonna do a pre-inspection interview. And the pre-inspection interview, it really requires us to review the system performance, uh, make any observations by the plant personnel, to determine if any abnormal operations or conditions have occurred while we haven't done any maintenance in the last year. Uh, what this allows us to do is just make sure the UPS is operating correctly the last thing we want to do is come out and work on a piece of equipment that's already an alarm and cause any type of risk to your down, downstream process. So we'll first sit down with you, kind of tailboard and figure out, is the UPS in a safe condition where we can now get into it, transfer it to bypass, and do the required maintenance. Once we determine that that is correct, uh, we'll go through that whole step process we talked about where we transferred it to bypass and get it into maintenance bypass, shut the system down, Following that, we're going to do a system cleaning. The entire system will be cleaned in order to remove dust and other contaminants that may lead to system malfunction. Uh, of course, cleaning also helps improve heat dissipation, reduces heat-related stress. Uh, cleaning it will improve the system reliability. This cleaning is gonna be done with a vacuum cleaner, uh, small brushes, and forced air. 
we'll go through and clean the transformers, all of the uh, bridges, all of the control cards, and really just make sure that any type of contaminants have been removed from the system altogether. After we do the uh, system cleaning, then we're going to do the inspection and verification. Uh, the system will be inspected for evidence of wear, heat stress, damage or loose failed components due to aging, vibration, or other environmental conditions. All the electrical connect connections will be checked for integrity, tightness. Uh, we're looking for corrosion on circuit boards and transformers. Uh, we're checking for anything that's wrong with any type of elect electrical components. Um, the component electrical the component performance will be verified to ensure against time-related wear. Uh, we'll take measurements and compare the factory standards and parts, and we'll make sure that there's nothing that looks like it's been weakened either from environmental stresses as well. So this is where we go through and really just double check that everything looks as it should from when it was installed. Following that, we're going to do the uh, parts replacement. This is the annual PM as we talked about. So there aren't a lot of components to be changed out on that annual preventive maintenance. However, we are going to change out those PC board relays and any pilot lights on the piece of equipment. Then we get into the system operation and function testing. So this is the part where we're going to really pace, put the system through its paces and make sure that it's operating and works in the design when it needs to in the event of a power outage. <clears throat> So the first thing we're going to do is test the aux contact and shunt trip to the DC input breaker. Uh, this is simulating if the UPS was required to run on an operator on your battery. At 105 volts, your batteries are unable to keep the capacitance levels that the inverter requires to protect your downstream load. What we don't want to do is cause the battery to go below 105 volts or all the way to zero volts because if that does happen, it can damage your battery. You may not be able to get the full capacitance back from your battery when it does recharge, and in some cases could even cause you to have to replace the battery altogether. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that that aux contract trips when it's supposed to at 105 volts, and that the inverter seamlessly transfers the bypass source to prevent the battery from getting to a zero voltage, and that it also protects the process downstream. We then test all alarm set points to ensure the proper alarming and verify that they're set correctly. Uh, there are a lot of alarm options that you can purchase for any of your pieces of equipment. There are some standard alarms that comes with any piece of equipment you buy from us. But regardless of what you have in that system, we will test all of the alarms, and that includes the uh, time delays as well. Uh, this ensures that uh, if the UPS were to be an alarm, it's showing you correct indications, and so that you know what the UPS is doing at any given moment. Follow testing the alarms, we're going to calibrate all the voltages and current readings with a true RMS meter. Uh, it's also important that when you come up to UPS and you either interact with the, uh, the uh, gauges on the front, whether it be the analog gauges or you work with one of our touch screens, that when you do pull that screen up, it shows you the proper voltages and currents that are on that. So we'll check those voltages and currents every year to make sure that the UPS is showing you the correct voltage. If it's not, we'll go in and calibrate the system and make sure that they are correct to our meters. We then check the free running frequency. And what that is, is the inverter's frequency running without the alternate source available. The uh, UPS forces itself to synchronize to your bypass source. So in order to do that, our inverter needs to run at 60 hertz cycle, plus or minus 2%. And so we'll remove the bypass source voltage from the inverter. We'll then check its free running frequency and if needed, we'll calibrate that frequency so that it's within that 60 hertz cycle so that it's always phase locked to your bypass source. If you were to take an oscilloscope and look at the two sine waves, you would see that they would lay right on top of each other and be synchronized to each other. That's part of how we're able to transfer it seamlessly from the bypass source to the inverter, from the inverter back to the bypass source, and never disrupt your downstream process. After that, we're going to do the uh, black plant simulation. This is where we're going to make the inverter run into a load bank that we'll either provide or use that's on site. Uh, this will then be tied to the output of the inverter. We'll then shut off the 480 feeds coming into the inverter and make sure that the inverter runs and operates off the battery. This is to simulate that you did have that storm or that lightning or that upstream power event where the UPS is now discharging. We're looking to make sure that your batteries are stable, that they're not uh, cratering or, or the voltage isn't collapsing fast. Uh, so we're really just making sure that that UPS is operating as it should. Uh, the inverter honestly doesn't care 
what happens externally to it as long as it has DC voltage and current available to it. So whether you use you lose a bypass source or you lose an upstream 480 voltage, you're going to get lots of alarms. They'll tell you, hey, there's a problem. But honestly, as long as the inverter has DC current and voltage available, it'll continue to protect your downstream loads. And that's really what we're checking and making sure it does here. After we do that, we're going to test the over temperature thermal couples on the inverter and also on the static switch. Uh, what these are is if you were to have a, a failure inside the UPS that caused a fire, maybe a transformer uh, has failed because of heat stress, uh, we're able to make sure that the inverter sees that there's a extreme heat change. And when that does happen, uh, the inverter's thermal couples will short. It'll cause the inverter to sense that. It'll seamlessly transfer itself to the bypass source before it succumbs to a complete failure. It'll shunt trip that DC input breaker again and shut itself down to protect the uh, downstream load. Uh, this is important because if it weren't to happen properly, the UPS could possibly have a situation where the boards are damaged by the fire, the inverter is unable to transfer to the bypass source, and because of that, the inverter will shut down and drop the load as well. So we do test all the thermal couples on the inverter bridge and static switch. We then check the 40 input voltages for balances on the charger bridge. We want to make sure that the input currents going into the charger bridge are within a couple amps of each other. This tells us that all three legs are firing correctly inside the bridge. Uh, if they are not balanced, that means that we may have lost an SCR or fuse to the charger bridge. Uh, that's important to check because a charger can show 135 volts output even only on two legs. But when current requirements are drawn off the inverter, the charger may not be able to keep up with the current demands. That means the battery then would have to discharge in order to support that current that the charger can't do, and you're constantly cycling on your battery. So we do check the 40 input voltages and make sure that the bridge is operating correctly. Then we verify all of our AC caps are functioning correctly. Uh, this is extremely important because we want to make sure that first and foremost, you're getting a clean sine wave to your downstream process. These inverters run 24 seven, seven days a week, and very rarely do they actually have to operate where they have to protect you against a, uh, an event of an upstream power loss, whether that be from something external or storm, but more often than not, they're constantly used for power conditioning your downstream process uh, voltages. So we wanna make sure that we have a very clean sine wave. So here we're gonna be looking to make sure that the capacitance is correct by taking uh, voltage readings across the capa capacitor bank. Uh, we're looking for any type of swelling or leaking capacitors. Uh, also, if the caps start to fail, you start to lose voltage, the output voltage is on the inverter as well. So we're checking all of your capacitors. We'll also do that in your DC capacitors as well. Make sure none of them have vented, uh, that your DC caps are healthy as well. We then check the ripple current across the battery to ensure that it's less than 5% rate of the battery. This is important because if your ripple current is greater than 5% the amp hour rating, your VRL batteries can actually see internal heating to the, to the cell's plates. This internal heating can cause the battery to degrade over time. So now that VRL battery, rather than meeting its 20 or 10 year design life, it could be sometimes half or less than that. So it is important that we check that ripple current every year. Um, if we do see that there is high ripple, we either suggest that you guys put a ripple choke in between the inverter and the battery itself, or in some cases you may have an older battery charger that is uh, supplying the current to your battery. It may be a six pulse charger, which also could cause some ripple. Uh, we may recommend that you upgrade that to a 12 pulse charger, but this will be something to be annotated on the report. We then take infrared imaging on all the magnetics and the bridges. Here we're looking for hot spots, areas where there might be a loose connection, uh, signs of uh, degradation over time because of environmental uh, need from heat from changing back and forth on the inverter itself. Uh, we're doing that inside the bridge as well. We're looking to see if the SCR is showing any types of uh, signs of wear and starting to fail and break over because of heat. All this infrared imaging is then compared to last uh, reports to make sure that we're not seeing anything getting worse or train in the wrong directions, or if there's obvious signs of problem, we'll correct it during the preventive maintenance. And then following all that, we're gonna review the alarm history. Uh, this is where we get a chance to go through the system's alarms. If it allows, there are some of our assets out there that are older that don't allow us to use a laptop to plug into alarm events. But if you have uh, something that's somewhat new, uh, we will be able to look at the alarm logs. 
Uh, this is going to allow us to check to see if there's anything that may have been happening that we weren't aware of because it's an intermittent discrepancy. So we're looking for some sort of alarm, such as an intermittent transfer. Maybe the system's going in and out of sync. Uh, maybe there's signs that it's discharging on the batteries every so often. That may be a sign of a charger failure that's happening intermittently. So we'll review the alarm history, see if there's anything that looks like it's trending because of a failure that's happening intermittently. And if there is, we'll try to get the UPS to duplicate that. And if it does that, we will repair it while we're there on the preventive maintenance. And then lastly, like we talked about before, we're going to ensure that the output power is at true, clean, sinusoidal uh, sine wave. We'll hook up an oscilloscope and look at that output and make sure the UPS is operating and giving clean power to your downstream process. So all of this function testing is done annually. This is part of our annual PM service. Even though we didn't change out a lot of components, as you can see, the function testing and what we put the UPS through is very important to ensure that it operates when needed. Following the function testing, we're then going to kind of do a, a battery, an overall battery inspection. The uh, battery inspection that we do with the PM doesn't include a battery test. Uh, we can offer capacitance testing that is sold as a separate service. It is an IEEE uh, battery capacitance test. Uh, we do recommend doing it with the PM as we're already there and it does keep the cost of that battery test down um, because we're already included with the travel and everything gets to your site. But the PM testing that we do while on site that is included with the PM requires us to go out and look at each individual cell. We'll take individual cell readings. We'll take overall battery readings. Uh, we'll take a look at any type of corrosion happening on the battery. We'll look for any loose connections, sediment levels, plate swelling, any gassing that may be happening inside that battery. Uh, we'll let the battery discharge into the inverter and make sure that the battery does reach a recovery voltage where it stabilizes. Uh, all this is part of the PM. Any abnormalities we find within the battery, we'll make note of it and make sure that uh, you are aware of that so that it can either be corrected or dealt with um, as you guys see fit. So that's the annual preventive maintenance. So that's what we would recommend doing for that first four years of its service life. When it reaches that five-year life, we're now going to do the same exact same thing we did on the annual PM with the addition that we're going to just change out additional parts. So as we talked about in the five year, we're going to change out those annual relays and pilot lights, but now we're going to change out the fans and fuses and system relays. Then it's back to those annual PMs, same scope of work done every year. Then we get to the 10 year mark. We're going to change out now more additional components that let, reach that electronic life cycle. That's going to include those AC and DC capacitors those printed circuit boards we talked about because they have those uh, capacitors on them as well. And then again, it's that same scope we're gonna go through each year and testing the functionality of the UPS. Then at the 15, 20 years, as the system kind of starts to show age, depending on the environment it's in, a lot of these uh, UPSs do get installed in pretty clean and cool and controlled environments. Uh, so they don't really require the transformer change out to the 15, 20 year marks. But if you do have a UPS that's exposed to a lot of uh, environmental stress, we do start to recommend that about 15 to 20 years, we think about proactively changing out any noisy or hot transformers. Uh, the reason of that being is we don't want that transformer to run to failure. If it does run to failure, in order for you to get a new transformer manufactured by us, it could take anywhere from six to eight weeks for us to manufacture and ship that component. And the last thing you want to do is have a, a unit that has failed a transformer and is now waiting six weeks on bypass with no backup in order for you to get that part out there. So if we start to sense or see a transformer that's trending towards failure uh, as we come out there year over year to do those PMs, we do suggest that you go ahead and proactively replace that magnetic. And so we don't have to uh, put you at risk if it were to fail. Every PM does include a 12 month factory warranty. That warranty is extremely important for you as it does protect you if there was an infantile failure on an electronic component. Anybody that works in the electronic industry and works around electricity knows that it tends to be that you'll install something and it'll last you the entire electronic life cycle or for some odd reason it may have some sort of failure component. It could fail within two weeks of installing it. If that does happen, we do protect you. We'll come out and protect, uh, change out that part and no cost to you for labor, travel, or the component itself. Uh, so it does give you uh, peace of mind knowing that you are protected. 
And then, of course, every PM includes a custom service report for every asset we do touch. Uh, that means that uh, we will provide you a work order that will include pictures and everything that we did, all the voltages that we found, all the voltages we left it with, all the components that were changed out on that. That report gets sent to you electronically. And then one will be stall or uh, saved in our archives. So if you ever do lose it, we can pull it up for you and get it back in your hands. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the uh, preventive maintenance and what we do every year, every five years, and then every 10 years. Uh, the benefits of those preventive maintenance, again, is to make sure that uh, your UPS lasts a full design life as, uh, as it was created when we manufactured it. Um, annual calibration function testing ensures the critical processes are protected. So you have that peace of mind that if we come out and do the work every year, you know that unit will operate as it was designed in the event of an emergency. You know that when we send a factory field engineer out to your site to work on your piece of equipment, that it's coming with over 250 years of combined knowledge of our, our field engineers, that they know what they're doing. They're going to be able to work safely on your equipment and be able to get it into bypass and back to the inverter without interrupting any of your downstream process. Our aftermarket warranty is at 12 months after the PMs. There's an option for a multi-year contract. Again, if you have questions about that, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, but the big part of it is it ensures no additional costs in between maintenance events. You're able to schedule the PMs when you need them. Uh, there isn't an outage required to do the maintenance. However, if you do feel more comfortable working in your outage to do the preventive maintenance, that's fine. Do keep in mind that everybody's outage seasons are either in the spring or the fall. So do give us a heads up as soon as you do know when the PMs are coming due so that we have uh, time on your calendar so we can schedule you in. We have 24 seven technical support with your Amatech uh, technical managers. Uh, so even though you're doing regular maintenance, you do have a failure. You also have that peace of mind that you can get a hold of us anytime you need. Even if it's after hours or on a holiday, where response time is less than an hour. We don't use any offshore or third party companies. You'll be working with one of our technical managers out of Houston. It is good to know that our standard lead time for parts, if you are trying to get parts from us, is less than two weeks. And if you are having an emergency, those emergency spare parts are less than a week to get parts out to you. If you've got a newer system, we can typically get you those parts uh, almost overnight if needed, depending on the uh, manufactured date of the equipment itself. So that takes us to our questions. Um, uh, this time I'll turn it over to anybody that has questions for me. Yeah. Cool. So uh, Chris, thank you very much for that. Uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, the first question we have is according to the annual PM procedures, what is the risk of interrupting the load? Um, I know that's difficult, but if you want to handle that one. Uh, I'm sorry, I said that one again, it came in a little quiet. Yeah. It says, according to the annual PM procedures, what is the risk of interrupting the load? Oh, that is a great question. So the risk that we, you really can't quantify the risk, right? Um, doing the preventive maintenance, our factory field engineers really go above and beyond to make sure that everything is correct before we transfer it. So if you're not skilled in working on the systems that sells and do regular maintenance on them all the way, you wouldn't know some of the other things that we test prior to the transfer. Uh, besides just ensuring that we have an in-sync light on the UPS itself, uh, we go extra steps before we do the transfer and we'll take that true RMS voltmeter and we're going to test across the different phases, inputs, the static switch. So we'll look at the A phase and the B phase and C phase if it's a three-phase unit uh, from both the bypass input and the inverter input to the static switch. And what we're looking for is to see that that voltage is less than 30 volts across all three phases. If it's less than 30 volts across all three phases, we know that it is in sync with itself. Um, so that we know that besides just seeing that green indication light, that the static switch is in sync because we took additional measurements across the bridge. When we press the bypass the load push button, we then take a current clamp and we look at the current on the static switch and we ensure that the current has transferred from the inverter to the bypass source. So we'll clamp onto both the A, B, and C phase. We confirm that the current has moved. Once we do that, we roll that maintenance bypass switch, which again is a make before break contact switch. When it goes into bypass position, we once again take a current meter 
And now we're making sure that there's no current coming through the static switch. And that, that current is now only located on the bypass, on that uh, maintenance bypass switch. And we do the same thing when we go back onto the inverter. So in doing those extra steps, that's how we really ensure that there is no chance of any interruption to the load. So besides just double checking to make sure that the green light says in sync, compressing bypass load and rolling it, one of our factory engineers will take additional precautions as they move the load over and then back again to ensure there's no interruption. So that's how that's how we're able to ensure that there is uh, no risk to disrupting the downstream load when perform, performing the maintenance. Cool. Uh, good answer. I'd just like to add to that as well. A lot of people have this misconception that uh, once we are in maintenance bypass, that um, the work that we're doing inside the UPS can cause issues to your load circuits. And that is not possible. Once you're in maintenance bypass on the, the actual physical switch, then what we do inside the, the UPS is completely isolated from your load circuits. So uh, it won't have any effect on your loads whatsoever. So there's really only two times that your load um, is going to be subject to a very, very minimal risk, just like Chris said. And that is when you transfer from inverter to bypass uh, using the static switch and then the bypass switch. And then when all the maintenance is done, when you go back from bypass to inverter, that is the only two times that there is a minor risk. And as he, Chris said, we do everything we can to mitigate that risk. Uh, the next question is, um, can you tell us more about the new virtual support? Who to call? Who do we need to contact for that and how that works? Do you want to take that or do you want me to take it, Chris? Oh, you can, you can probably do that one if you like to. Yeah, absolutely. So the new virtual support, um, if you want to use it, you have to contact your uh, service representative for uh, the location that you are in, uh, usually the technical service manager. And what he will do is he will send you out either a link to your cell phone or a link to your tablet, um, whatever you are using. And then what that does, it gives you is a cloud based service. So that will give you an automatic connection similar to FaceTime um, on a, uh, an iPhone. But what the additional benefits that it has is actually it's merged reality. So what we can do is we you can put the, the picture of the, the UPS uh, on your camera. And then what we can do on our end is we can point at things inside the UPS and you can see us pointing it on your tablet or your smartphone. Um, so we can say, can you check on that terminal there? You'll be able to see exactly which terminal we're referring to. And it makes life uh, so much easier for you. Um, so the, the service that we use is called Help Lightning um, and it's a very robust system. But uh, what we have found is obviously you do need to have a good internet connect connection wherever you are uh, or a good cellular connection wherever you are because it is internet based, it is cloud based. Um, so that is how it works. So if you need more information, uh, you can just contact the normal person you would contact for any technical service needs that you have at, at this moment in time, and they will be able to initiate a help lightning call with you if necessary. I hope I answered that. Um, is all the recommended maintenance, sorry, if all the recommended maintenance is performed, how long will a UPS last? Should it re be replaced after 25 to 30 years? And Chris knows That's why I'm smiling at this. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Um, so here's kind of how it is works with this. Um, like we talked about, Amatex All State Controls doesn't obsolete any products that they manufacture, which is unique in this industry. Uh, we do provide parts, labor, services on any Amatec SEI asset that you have that is currently operating and active with inside your plant. Um, that being said, as the equipment ages, <clears throat> like anything in technology, parts availability does become uh, a lot harder for you to be able to get them, right? Uh, so if you have a piece of equipment that is 30 plus years old, we will definitely be able to support that piece of equipment and continue to support that piece of equipment. But as that technology gets older and older, those aren't parts that we keep readily available in our factory. So if you were to have a control card that failed, uh, there may be a longer lead time in order to get that part to your facility. Um, and so for that reason, it becomes more critical that you have 
parts available at your site uh, and keep those parts caged as your, as your equipment starts to age. It is recommended that as your equipment gets to be about 25 to 30 years old, it is a good time to start thinking about upgrading it into a newer unit. And not only just because they lead time on components and stuff like that, but because you're also getting a newer technology, um, you know, so that older ferro analog unit, now you've got something that has a lot more intuitive interaction with it and the touch screens. And then like I talked about, we can get parts over to you easier, um, but it is not uncommon. Some of our clients have pieces of equipment that were built in the uh, mid eighties that are still operating and functioning parts of their plants. Um, so I would really just say that uh, we'll take care of them as long as you have them in service, but it is our recommendation that about 25, 30 years, it is probably start time to think about getting the, um, the budget to upgrade into them. Cool. Uh, sorry about that. Chris, uh, I was trying to find a link to uh, help lightning. Uh, somebody has asked, can you show us one of the, f in one of the future seminars, how this new virtual support works in real time? Um, I would love, to be able to do that but unfortunately the bandwidth that our webinar platform takes and the bandwidth that the help lightning um, uh, platform takes they don't work very well together and there's also some feedback issues with the microphones and the speakers um, so what um we might be able to do if brooke uh, might be able to put a a link to the help lightning demo video um, inside the, the chat bar there. Um, and what we may actually be able to do is at one of our webinars is create a video for you. And then we can play that video within the webinar of how the actual, um, uh, how you can interact with the UPS with the new, uh, the new version of help lightning and how uh, you can see the merge reality work. Uh, but unfortunately, it's very difficult to do it in a live setting uh, with the webinar. Uh, Brenda asks, can we get a copy of the presentation? If you, obviously you have typed some, something in the chat bar, that means that you registered for this webinar. So you will automatically get a link to the replay. Uh, we tend not to give out copies of the presentations themselves. But what to do, Brenda, is um, you can contact us, uh, contact your local service provider, and they may be able to get it to you. Uh, we don't want to put it out to, to the general public. Um, I hope you understand why we do that. Um, also, is there a way to change the date to, uh, on an, oh, I'm reading this, on an older unit that has original control boards? Uh, ooh. That's something we're going to have to discuss on a different level, John. Uh, John I know you put that in a private chat. Um, I'll give you my email address and uh, uh, we can discuss that um, and see how we can take care of that. Yeah. Um, we've got a few more minutes left, everyone. So if you have any more questions whatsoever, whether it's regarding the maintenance uh, procedures that Chris mentioned today, or whether since one of our la last webinars, you have um, any questions that you would uh, like to ask technical uh, or to do with sales. Um, both myself and Chris have lots of experience so we can uh, help you with that. Let me just scroll through the questions while I'm looking. Oh, there's a question there from over three years of operation. So the question is UPSs which have uh, UPSs which we have are qualified for 40 years of operations. You said the CVT replacement should be performed every 15 to 20 years. Please clarify. That is, that's a good question. So your uh, UPSs, CVTs, quite honestly, the transformer should never have problems with them um, in the entire lifetime that they're actually installed and active. The reason we recommend starting to look at them around 15 to 20 years is completely built around the environmental exposure that they may have. Uh, the design life qualified for 40 years is assuming that you're keeping them in some sort of environment where they're not exposed to extreme temperature changes, uh, heavy levels of uh, coke dust, uh, maybe not exposed to you know low levels of H2S, 
These are things that we've seen in the past that if a uh, transformer is subjected to for 20 plus years, can degrade the life expectancy of them. But if you're doing regular maintenance and you're keeping keeping them clean, even if they're exposed to even temperature changes, as long as they're not being extreme, yeah, your transformers don't have to be changed out uh, at 15 to 20 years. It's just that we start suggesting we're keeping an eye on them and making sure that about that time frame we're proactively annotating if we're seeing any type of stresses. Um, not saying that you should change them out. So that's a good question. Yeah, don't assume that you have to change them out at 15 to 20 years. We're suggesting that you just start being very aware to how they're operating. Yeah, and uh, to follow up on that, um, for those who use uh, the recommended um, annual and five yearly and tenly PM maintenance uh, schedules that we recommend and use an Amatech FSE to perform that. All of our Amatech FSE, uh, they, they all carry a FLIR infrared camera. And one of the items that they always take a picture of is the transformer. And we can trend the temperature of the core of the transformer over time. And if we see a steady increase over time, then that would indicate that the transformer maybe uh, is starting to have issues. But like Chris said, if that if that temperature is remaining constant over time, then um, as as we would expect, then uh, you you shouldn't have to replace that transformer. That's right. The next question is, what about PMs for DCRs and DVSs? Uh, for DCRs, it's exactly the same as for a UPS. We do all the tests on a DCR with the charger section of the UPS. So uh, we just miss out the inverter and static switch section. And uh, for DVS, um, we do uh, PMs on that. There's less parts to replace, um, uh, but there is some uh, we obviously recommend anything that has control boards and connections uh, in them so that they be shut down if possible and cleaned out and all the connections checked on a regular basis. So we do have uh, procedures in place to do both DCRs and DVSs. Once again, contact your local uh, representative to uh, get a quote for that if necessary. Yep. Uh, somebody's asked about uh, thermocouples um, and how to test them. Uh, the, re the only real way you can test a thermocouple is if it's going to work at the temperature required is to get a heat gun and heat it up to uh, above the temperature level that is required to cause it to either open or close. And for most of our thermocouples, that temperature is 90 degrees C. So you have to get it pretty darn hot to uh, get it to transfer over. That is the only actual real test you can do to test the actual uh, operation of the thermocouple. Apart from that, you can uh, obviously just open or close the switch using the terminals to uh, basically pretend that it is uh, operating. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, what about molded case circuit breaker testing on the UPS? We do not recommend any um, testing of the molded circuit breakers on the UPS. Um, now, we do realize that a lot of plants have their own injection testing schedules, mostly for their MCCs, not usually on a, uh, a UPS. Um, so to answer that question, we don't have uh, any... Um, any PM procedures that would test the molded case circuit breakers and their uh, operation at the certain currents. So that is the answer to that. Well, I think uh, that is all the questions we have time for today. John, I'm gonna send you my email address. So just uh, hang on and I will send that to you in just a moment. I would like to thank everybody as usual for um, taking the time out of your day. As always, we really do understand that you are very busy, you have uh, hectic schedules, and to take an hour out of your day to uh, listen to us, um, we really do appreciate that. We hope you found it interesting. Uh, Brooke, as usual, has put some links in the chat bar. You will have access to them even when we close down this webinar. Um, and 
Bill Dramatech SCI, and uh, we have lots of white papers um, and uh, all the technical uh, things with respect to the UPS will be found on that website. Uh, so we do appreciate it. Chris, thank you very, very much. Really enjoy that. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to present that for us. Yeah, thank you to everybody who came on. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, look out for your emails. Um, we will be sending um, a survey. Uh, our marketing department will be sending out a survey. And I really do encourage you uh, to please let us know what topics you would like us to cover in future uh webinars um we do try and keep them as technical as possible uh, this week obviously we did a bit more sales and maintenance uh, service but um we rely on you to tell us what you would like to learn about so if you uh, in that survey let us know what future webinars you would like what topics you would like us to cover we will definitely try and put that uh into the next webinar. Um, so in about a month's time, we will be doing our next one. Don't know what the subject is yet. So please get those emails in and uh, look out for that email. And we appreciate you taking your time out today. Thank you for watching and we'll talk again next time. Thanks very much, everyone.